Hello everybody. This is the first in a series of three videos showing you how to set up and use your new ZX cameras for Roblox applications with ROS2. Today I want to unbox and show you how to set up the new Stereolabs ZX cameras with the Jetson Developer Kit. In the next video, we'll set up the computer with the Stereolabs SDK and see the first data coming from the camera. The ZX and ZX Mini are great new cameras for mobile robotics and manipulation that come with GMSL2 connectors. This is a high throughput serial link that is ruggedized for industrial applications like robotics. However, because of the new connector, this does require a little bit of setup that we'll see in the first part of the series. The ZX cameras are great for a box with a much smaller form factor than the traditional Z cameras that you might be familiar with. These models are similarly sized as the RealSense cameras with higher depth quality and analogous ranges. They also come with the hardware synchronized IMU, global shutter cameras, IP66 grade industrial enclosures with plenty of mounting points, and a wide 120 degree field of view. Overall, these cameras are top-notch and definitely worth considering for any new Roblox applications, especially now that the future of RealSense is questionable. The Stereolabs SDK is optimized to operate with the NVIDIA Jetson series of boards, which are becoming increasingly common in mobile Roblox applications. This SDK provides high-quality depth information, 3D detections and tracking, visual inertial geometry, map building, and more. Today, we're going to be setting it up with the NVIDIA Jetson AGX Orient, which is recommended by Stereolabs and available from their shop. You can see here the GMSL2 capture card that we're going to be installing into the Jetson Developer Kit. The AGX uh, comes with an impressive box about 10x the size of the computer itself that comes with a power supply and a random extra USB-A to USB-C cable, which is pretty nice. Um, next, we need to install the GMSL2 capture card into the CSI port of the Jetson Developer Kit. You'll notice that we partially blocked the power port of the board when it's installed. This is totally fine since the power is coming from the Jetson itself via the CSI port. The card comes with a couple bolts and plastic standoffs to secure it in place. As you can see, it takes me a little bit of maneuvering to get all the bolts in place, but it's easy enough in just a minute or two. Once the card is secured in place, then we can connect the camera to the Jetson using the GMSL2 uh, splitter cables provided by Stereo Labs in the capture card kit. The cable has four split ends, which can handle four individual cameras, but in this case, we only have one ZX Mini, so the remaining cables are just floating. Um, all we need to do now is connect the power supply to one of the USB-C ports on the Jetson, and we're good to go. Make sure to check out the second part of the series where we'll be plugging in the Jetson to set up the SDK, get some data off the camera for the first time, and check out some of the new cool spatial intelligence capabilities. Also, make sure to check out the links in the description if you're interested in learning more about the Stereolabs ZX cameras.